Everybody. This is Christopher Brower here with Daily Motor, and today we're driving the 2022 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. This one's finished in Lime Rush and certainly does not blend in with the nuclear wasteland I decided to start my review in today. I figured more of an off road scene would fit the bill better for this Toyota 4Runner, though I neglected to bring boots. But anyways, we'll gloss over that for now. If you're unfamiliar with the Toyota 4Runner, it is Toyota's more off-road focused SUV. It's been around for quite a while, and um, well, this generation's been the same for over 10 years. But anyways, with the TRD Pro package, we are getting 17-inch special TRD wheels, Nitto all-terrain tires. We get this old-school Toyota font here on the front grille. All of these come with roof racks, which some people aren't too happy about, but I don't know why you'd be concerned about gas mileage on a vehicle like this, but anyways, I think it looks very at home and appropriate and cool on this 4Runner. We also have a front skid plate, which I don't think you can see from my angle, but I'll put in a shot for you there. It even says TRD on it in red writing. Otherwise, this TRD Pro gets its own unique exhaust system, which you will hear later and can decide what you think about that. This thing has 9.6 inches of ground clearance, which is pretty impressive. Just trudging through the snow. Right, okay. Coming around to the back here, power release handle. We have quite a bit of room back here with a retracting privacy shield for your luggage or whatever you decide to put back here. We also have this sliding table, which you unlock with this slides out and it locks into place for whatever you'd like to have back here. Maybe a bit of lunch or for cleaning fish or something. I don't know, whatever forerunner people do out in the wilderness. Something that I'd like to do someday. Anyways though, this does lock into place in a couple of different spots. So no matter where you want to have it, you can lock it into place. A couple of outlets back here to plug in whatever you may need to plug in. George Foreman, something like that. A couple of shallow pockets here for storage. First aid kit that's Velcroed down. Pretty usable area back here, especially considering those seats go down as well. Strap here to close the boot. And <laughs> little arrows here, which lower and raise the rear window. This has always been the Toyota 4Runner sort of party piece, and it's cool to see that it is still around in 2022. You can do this without the car even being on. Pretty neat function there. And of course you can operate that from up front as well. It's not only a function from back here. And I will say this thing does look proper. Toyota and Lexus always do such a good job with making just timeless designs. You know, this design has been around for over 10 years. The platform has been around for forever. And really it doesn't look old. Um, in, in some other ways it may feel old and we'll get to that once we're actually driving, but from an outside perspective, especially finished in Lime Rush, which I'm not completely sold on yet either, but anyways, <laughs> I don't think it looks too old, but maybe they're trying to tell us something about the dinosaur nature of this by painting it green. Anyways, let's step into the back here. You'd think I would learn by now. There we go. Take a look back here. Don't want to track in any slush onto our carpet floor mats. And back here we've got plenty of room. The seats are made out of what feels like a very nice soft pleather material. We've also got red stitching throughout this entire cabin. A couple of USB ports down here as well for your rear seat passengers. No separate climate control panel, but you do have vents that you can aim at yourself and whatnot. Storage pockets here on the back of the seats. Overall, just a really usable space back here and comfortable space. This is not as big of an SUV as an LX570 or even a GX, but it's still a very usable space. Still got plenty of room back here. Even with a camera on my head, I don't feel claustrophobic. Light colored headliner, which is made out of a very questionable material. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but we'll gloss over that for now. One thing that light headliners actually do well is make cabins feel more airy, more open. 
And in this case, that is exactly what this one is doing. It makes the car feel a little bit more spacious. So anyways, yeah, we've got an armrest here as well with removable cup holder inserts, which is good because if you spill something in there, you can just pull it out and clean it in the sink. So that's a nice feature. Of course, these seats go down as well and makes this whole back area very useful for things like mountain bikes or skis or whatever else uh, a Toyota 4Runner driver would be hauling back here. All right, well, let's go ahead and step up to the front of this thing and I'll show you around up there. Absolutely wrecked my shoes, but it's fine. <laughs> Gotta love that Toyota truck. Extremely loud fan noise when you start it up. Signature noise here. Actually a very attractive steering wheel up here in the front of this Toyota 4Runner. Nice perforated leather on the sides. And otherwise, you know, things are as usual up here. Nothing extravagant as far as infotainment goes, but sometimes I like old time rock and roll when it comes to things like this. Like look at these big chunky knobs to control your temperature for the climate control. It's actually got dual climate control as well. You can make this one unique over here. Nice chunky buttons for our fan, for where we want the air to go. Nice AC button there, which is something that's hilarious to appreciate, but I like having everything right here, right out in front of me. We've got this typical matte display here. For our infotainment, we do have wired Apple CarPlay. Otherwise though, just a normal Toyota infotainment system, more of an old school unit, which actually reacts just fine. I don't really have any complaints with the infotainment other than the texture of the screen is really not my favorite. I have never been a fan of what Toyota textures their screens with. Nice chunky hazard button there as well. We do have a unique TRD shift knob on this car as well, and some nice uh, branded floor mats. Otherwise, TRD stamped here on the headrests, same nice soft feeling material here in the front. Everything's just very chunky and large, and it feels like an interior made out of mega blocks in a good way, or Lego, I should say. But it's, it's, it's in a good way. I'm not bashing it for that. Everything feels very in place. Nice mechanical power steering there. <laughs> We've even got a little digital clock there above the infotainment with an hour and minute button to set it. Just so simple. Auto dimming mirror. And up here, we have a number of buttons as well. We've got our traction control switch up above, which is an interesting place for that. And below our traction control button here, we have these two knobs, which control our off-road settings and other things like that. Kind of like a drive mode selector in a newer car. Press this button here to activate it, and you can see all of our different settings here. Pretty cool stuff. I actually don't mind the placement for that. It frees up some space down here for things like our heated seat controls, which I'm going to turn off because it's quite hot. Oh yes, here is our switch for the rear window. You can see that going down. Actually, auto up. Check that out. Let's go ahead and take this thing out on the road and see what it's like to drive. I'm going to leave this thing in two-wheel drive. I've got traction control off. We're going to see if I can get through this ice. Definitely gonna get a little slideways. Just drive through here at a 45 degree angle. Really nice ride off road. This truck is damped to be very soft. It's a very soft and cushy ride overall with this TRD Pro package. Very, very impressive. I was just in the Topher's 4Runner which has an aftermarket Dobinson suspension. We're breaking through the ice here. Oh man, gotta keep our momentum up. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Topher's 4Runner has a Dobinson's lift and it's a little bit stiffer than this factory TRD Pro suspension. And I kind of like this TRD Pro suspension for driving around on the road. I mean, sure, you know, it can go through all of this ice and whatnot and make that experience very smooth, but it's also very smooth on the road too. 
feeling that ABS kick in there. Does a pretty, oh, see if I can pull out here on two-wheel drive. Come on, baby. There we go, okay. Let's go ahead and switch our traction control back on. You know, I actually don't mind that placement up there for our traction control switch. It does not bother me at all. So this Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro is powered by a 4-liter naturally aspirated V6. This engine's been around for so long, and so has the transmission that it's mated to. This is just a 5-speed automatic in this 4Runner. About 270 horsepower out of this naturally aspirated V6. No longer can you have a V8 in your 4Runner. You are limited to just this 4-liter V6. Go ahead and give it the beans here. Decent amount of power, but you can definitely tell it's lacking in the torque department as opposed to a V8. It's an okay powertrain. I'm, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan. The real plus, the real advantage to this powertrain is just going to be longevity and this 4Runner staying around and running quite literally forever. We do also have, as I mentioned earlier, a different exhaust on this 4Runner, the TRD Pro exhaust with a side exit to give a little bit more ground clearance. And it's pretty loud. I'm sure you could hear it you know, just from me getting on it there, but we're about to get onto the highway here and you'll hear just how loud this exhaust really is. It drones quite a bit on the highway and that is the biggest downside. It's fun to tool around town and, you know, have your loud exhaust. There's a TRX. Check that out. It's fun to, yes. It's fun to tool around town with this loud exhaust and be obtuse, you know, this is quite a look at me car, especially in Lime Rush as this one is finished. But when you're on the highway, that exhaust is definitely not ideal. We still have mechanical power steering in this 2022 4Runner, as well as a belt-driven fan. All of the noises it makes are very old-fashioned. Quite a bit of body roll here on the entrance ramp, to be expected. Pretty big lifted SUV here, okay. This Honda Odyssey to hopefully get out of the way or maybe not get out of the way. Anyways, I mean, even at 60 miles per hour, it does drone quite a bit and getting up here towards 70. You hear quite a bit of that exhaust. Not only do you hear the exhaust, you hear the tires. You hear the extra wind noise from that roof rack that comes standard on top of this uh, Toyota 4Runner. Overall, highway cruising, not really the best. It's doable. Um, the nice part about this, even though it is becoming very much an enthusiast vehicle, and if you're comparing it to cars like the Jeep Wrangler or the Ford Bronco, this at least has a set-in-place hard top. You don't have rattles or anything from a top that you'd have in a Jeep Wrangler or especially a Ford Bronco. We do have lane keep assist or more of just, you know, a system that'll yell at you if you go out of a lane. We've also got radar guided cruise control here, which are nice things to have and, you know, things that you would expect to find in a car that is a 2022. Good demonstration for you of the highway noise. Good amount of drone from the exhaust and quite a bit of howl from these Nitto all-terrain tires. <laughs> it's very floaty as well. I found it kind of tramlining from time to time, but it's such a smooth, cushy ride. It's very comfortable. More comfortable than a comparable Jeep Wrangler or Ford Bronco. Those vehicles ride a little bit stiff. This 4Runner does not at all. It's one of the softest riding SUVs, softest body on frame riding SUVs anyways that I've felt. As far as interior ergonomics and just placement of things go, it's not so bad. A lot of people are, you know, really rip on these Toyotas and Lexuses that are still laid out very old fashioned. This thing's been the same for over 10 years, for the most part, There's, there have been minor tweaks, but I don't mind it. And in, in a car like this, it almost makes sense because this is an enthusiast car now. The Toyota 4Runner has become such an enthusiast choice and that's because, well, none of its other competitors really exist anymore. The Mitsubishi Montero, the Nissan Xterra, cars like that that were big 
15 years ago no longer exist. So this 4Runner is really an enthusiast choice, uh, an enthusiast that likes off-roading or green paint, I guess. <laughs> but I don't mind the layout of the interior. In fact, I really like these knobs that you use for the climate control. I don't mind the buttons that are on the side of the infotainment, all of the other buttons as well to control the climate control, your fan speed and everything. Those are nicely laid out. Heated seat controls, you can take it or leave it. They're little knobs. Our auto up and down rear window, that works for me as well. The steering wheel is pretty thick and it's quite a big steering wheel and it adds to the cushiness of the car and the laziness of the steering and ride, just having this big thick steering wheel. Oh, it's a good time to mention as well, watch this. Oops, sorry, watch this. No one touch turn signal on this 2022 4Runner hilarious now it's things like that where I think I would draw the line you know it's one thing to have this really old-fashioned interior in here still which still works it's okay you know stuff like that you can get over but come on give me a one-touch turn signal Toyota how hard can it be to integrate something like that the drone is there but luckily we have a JBL sound system in this Toyota 4Runner you can turn that up and drown out all of the natural noises of this thing if you're interested in that JBL sound system, Charlie has done an in-depth review on that as well as the infotainment. So if you want to check that out, that'll be linked in the description. And I'm actually on my way to shoot a fuel economy test on this 4Runner currently as well. So if you're interested to see what this thing gets on the highway with its all-terrain tires, its roof rack, its ancient V6 engine, make sure to check that out as well. That will be linked down below uh, right with the sound system test. Okay love this, uh, this this cruise control setup. It's just so easy to use, so convenient just to have right here. One of my favorite cruise control setups. Toyota and Lexus have been using this for so long. My 2003 IS300, you know, it's probably the same part number that they, <laughs> they have on this 4Runner. It's the same little stock that sticks out. Following the theme of old-fashioned, our gauge cluster, we've got two analog displays on either side. And a tiny little display in the middle that tells me I've been getting about 13 mpg driving this thing around. The Topher was just driving this spiritedly, so that could have something to do with why it is performing so poor. I'm going to predict 18 on the highway. EPA is 19, so maybe it'll maybe it'll do 19 or 20. It's going to be high teens. I don't really think it'll quite touch 20. We shall find out. Otherwise, as far as interior touches go. Everything's very high up in here. The, the door panels, the dash, and it's a little bit hard to see out of the, um, the Topher's 2006 4Runner is quite a bit easier to see out of. I don't know guys, overall this is, this is a nice choice for enthusiasts. If you don't wanna go full enthusiast with a Ford Bronco or a Jeep Wrangler, if you don't wanna put yourself through the misery of having a removable top and having to listen to that all the time, and you know, the Jeep Wrangler is quite a small vehicle as well. It might not look it from the outside, but it's, it is a very small vehicle on the inside. And this Toyota 4Runner is actually quite spacious. I'd say comparable to the Ford Bronco. So these are all things to, to weigh. You know, the, the 4Runner didn't used to compete with these cars, but it's certainly appropriate nowadays to, to compare it to the Bronco and the Wrangler. And for me, it wins in a couple of categories. You know, for fun to drive, Honestly, I would pick it last. It's really not that fun to drive from an enthusiast standpoint. When you're off-road, it's very, very capable. There's all kinds of drive modes up here and hill descent and everything that we didn't even get into. But that's really where this 4Runner excels. But from a fun to drive standpoint, I would certainly go with a Ford Bronco. The nice thing about this 4Runner is you can actually use it as a daily driver without much misery. If you don't get the TRD Pro, you don't have to worry about the drone or the all-terrain tires, and it's actually a very usable vehicle. Tons of room in here, hard top, and you know, just a really nice platform that's been around for a while. Toyota got it right 10 years ago, and they are sticking with it. Predicting probably next generation of this 4Runner, we're gonna see some sort of a twin-turbo V6 following suit with the Lexus LX600 and the new Toyota Tundra. So we'll see how the next gen looks. As for now though, this generation is very well known, it's very well loved, and you know, it's gonna be around for a while, even after it ends production, these things will just last forever. So, and they probably won't depreciate very much either. So it might actually be a good time to scoop one of these up in its last couple of model years and 
just make the most out of your ownership experience. So let's go ahead and take one last look around this thing and we will wrap this review up today. I got it a little bit muddy, but just adds to the character of the look of this thing. This lime rush color is so ridiculous. What do you guys think? Does it remind you of a Lamborghini or an Escape Hybrid? I can't quite decide. All right, guys. Well, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Thank you for joining me in driving this Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. Comment down below your thoughts. Would you have this, a Wrangler, or a Bronco? I think overall I'm still picking the Bronco. Sorry, 4Runner guys. Fantastic car, but... Uh, as far as fun to drive goes, it's got to be the Bronco for me. For daily use, it's got to be the 4Runner. All right, guys. Well, this has been Christopher Brower here with Daily Motor. And as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.